business background, some of the applications would include accumulation of a constant function over time. So I have money coming in at a fixed rate. I want to know how much money I'll get over a period of time. This can actually be done by arithmetic. We don't need calculus, but it's worthwhile to start with a problem like that to see that we're setting up an integral. Accumulating marginal change is one where we expect to have a non-constant marginal cost function, and I'd like to know what the change in cost is from one place to another. So to get back to the original function from the marginal function. Accumulations of things that have exponential decay, there are lots of things that as time goes on, it decay, the amount of stuff coming through changes, Oil wells are an example of that. So I'd like to be able to find out if I know what the decay rate is and I know what I'm starting at, how much will I get in one year, three years, five years? A more complicated problem is talking about the present value of a revenue stream. And we can also talk about proportional growth and constant reinvestment. So the first three problems are pretty simple. Applications A, B, and C, we have a basic formula that the accumulated amount is the integral from the start time to the end time of the accumulation rate. And we simply have to know what our starting time, ending time, and accumulation rate are. So those are straightforward problems. Application E, what we do in the text, is continuous compounding. And there's a formula that was stated in the last chapter, and we give reason why it ought to be true in this chapter. If I have a principle P at a rate of R time T, if we have annual compounding, my growth factor, as opposed to my growth rate, is 1 plus R. I raise that to the number of years, multiplied by the principle that gives the amount of T. If I have my same interest rate, but I'm compounding n times a year. My rate in each period is r over n, but I have n times as many. And so this is compounding n times a year. And if I go to instantaneous, then the mysterious e shows up and it becomes e to the r, where r is the growth rate. But what we really like to focus on is present value. This is something that will come up in various business courses. It's also where we want to set up what the integral is. In figuring out current value, present value, the idea is someone promising to pay you $1,000 10 years from now is not worth $10,000 to you. It's worth however much you could put in the bank right now and have it as $10,000 10 years from now. This shows up in bond pricing, that you want to know how much is a fair price for a bond. So in talking about this, we'll talk about a risk-free investment rate. Typically that, in practice, is the T-bill rate or something like that. You think of it as risk-free. You're going to get your money back. You want to know what the investment rate is. So if I have P for T years, my present value will be 1 plus r to the minus t times p, because if I multiply it by the interest invested in that rate, I'll be multiplying by 1 plus r to the t. Those will cancel out and I'll get p. It's the amount of money I need to put in my investment to get p dollars back after t years. If instead of doing it as an annual rate, someone has given me a continuous interest rate, it depends on the sources to which one they'll give me, then I use e to the minus rt. Again, that's the amount I have to put in. If I'm doing an income stream, I've got an income function and my depreciation for how much is it actually worth now as opposed to somewhere in the future, my discounting function. And so I need to multiply the two of them. And the integral will be the present value from the start time to the end time of my discounting value times however much income I'm going to get. So as an example, we're going to look at problem eight. I have a revenue stream, which is a rate of 40,000 plus 2,000 T dollars per year with T measured in years. 
we assume a risk-free investment rate of 3%, and I want to know what the current value is for 20 years. What I'm really interested in here is not finding the value, but figuring out which integral I want to set up to do problem eight. I've been told I'm going to do 20 years, so I'm going from zero to 20. I'm told my risk-free investment rate is 3% per year. I'm going to assume, first of all, that that's an annual rate. And so I've got 1.03 to the minus t, that's my discounting function, times 40,000 plus 2,000 t dt. That's a straightforward integral to set up. It's not such an easy integral to do. We either have to use Riemann sums or Wolfram alpha or something that will do CAS. If instead of this, this was annual 3%. The other way that the problem might be interpreted is I talk about a continuous rate of 3%. And that's going to be the same integral from 0 to 20 except instead of 1.03 to the t, I'm going to do e to the minus 0.03t times 40,000 plus 2,000t dt. And so this is how I do present value, which is one of the standard applications. As gets mentioned in class, I'm really interested in knowing what integral do I need to set up so that why do I care about doing integrals? Thank you.